So if we're looking at the earthquake project, let's do it first. It says, suppose that we have receiving stations. And again, this, at one time, this is how they did, the, they did it all on paper. Um, we have receiving stations at Newport, which is there. I'm going to do multicolors here. Oh, my God, these. So I have Newport, make them blue, and I have Peril up here in the corner. It's going to be red, which I'm going to put down so y'all can see. And then I have Wynn. Those are all my reporting centers. The distance from the earthquake epicenter to Newport, so from the epicenter, to Newport is 46.56 miles. And the one thing it tells me is that one unit equals three miles. So one by little squares is three miles. So I've got to convert the 46.56, I've got to divide it by three to see how many units I'm going to have. I did. This is going to be one of those days where I'm not going to write anything correctly, I think. Thank goodness I found my calculator. All right, 46.56 divided by 3. And that gives me 15.52 units. Right, so I'm going to round that to 15.5 units, which would be 15 and a half units. And then I'm going to look at the epicenter. So what was the next one? The epicenter to parable. is 27 miles. So I'm going to do the same thing, do the 27 divided by three, and I'm going to have nine units. And then the epicenter. Oh, I hate allergies. To win is 47.4 miles. So I'll take that one and divide it by three. I get 15.8. So we'll have to guesstimate that one a little bit. So now I'm going to go to my math. And I'm going to go, what it is, is wherever my epicenter is on my map, it's 15.5 units from Newport. Now I remember how I did this. She got, um, what we went over in... And it's uh, Wilson's class. And she got the units as 2, 5, and 4. And I don't know how. I don't, I don't know if it's the same. May not be. Because this should be my radius. It's been a long time since I've done this. What is the radius for fifteen by five would be your radius for Newport? Right. That's what I say. So, right. That's what I'm 
Shoot, it's been three years since I've done this, so I'm starting to doubt myself. But we're going to go out 15.5, so there's one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten, eleven, twelve, thirteen, fourteen, fifteen, and point five is going to be halfway between. So I'm going to put my little um, compass and then find where I put my mark. And then I'm going to draw a circle. Okay. And then pair goals, there's nine units. So I'm going to go out nine. It doesn't matter which way I go. Two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine. And I'm going to do the same thing with pair goal. To find my little hole that has the... And then when is 15.8, so one, two, oops, that should be two there, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten, eleven, twelve, thirteen, fourteen, fifteen, and point eight is going to be just shy of that next one. Find my circle that's close enough. Yeah. Okay. So I've got all three of my circles drawn. Ms. Wilson did uh, something about a circle equation. I don't know, it was like. Um, X minus H squared plus Y minus A squared equal R2. And it right is squared. Yeah. Yeah. But I didn't, I mean, you can do it that way, but this is a whole lot simpler. I think we got different numbers. Yeah. So right here, at this point, where all three of these circles intersect is my epicenter. So it's approximately, if I write the coordinates down, one, two, three, four, five, six. So it's six up. One, six up. That's my Y. And then it was one, two, three, four, five, six, seven. 8, 9, 10 on my X. So my coordinates is 10, 6. That's where my epicenter was, which it was, you know, we could try and divide it between Jonesboro, Lake City, and Truman. Of course, this is just kind of a made up. Now, we can write um, equations for all three of these circles, and then I could put in the coordinates 10, 6, to see if that is actually the epicenter where all three of them, because this point has to fall on all three circles. And if it does, then we uh, have the true answer. So what they would do is they would take it, then the, the equation of a circle, so if I do the Newport circle, My center, um, Newport's at one, two, three, four, five, negative five and two. And it had a radius of 15.5. So the equation of a circle is the x minus the x1 squared plus the y minus the y1 squared equals the radius squared. So don't worry about, I mean, remembering this. So I would do x minus the negative 5 gives me x plus 5. 
and then y minus 2 equals 15.5 squared. And then I want to check 10, 6 to see if it actually falls on that circle. So I'm going to put 10 in for x, put 6 in for y, and then I'm going to do the math on everything. So 10 plus 5 is 15. And 15 squared is 225. 6 minus 2 is 4. 4 squared is 16. 15.2 times 15.2 is 231. So 225 plus 16 is 241. Hang on, 15.5 times 15.5 is 240. So there I go again. I didn't knock the right number down. And here's where it gets kind of uh, shady. Because I can say that 241 equals the 240.25 because when I did the radius here, I had to round it to 15.2. Okay, so this is equal. This would be a true statement in the sense that I've had to round. So I have a rounding error. And then if I do parables, and parable is... and nine. So I do the same thing here, except that's minus. And my radius was nine. That's ten. I can't count either. And my pen's erasable. And again, I'm going to check the 10, 6. So I have 10 minus 15 squared plus 10 minus 10 squared plus 9 squared. 10 minus 15 is negative 5, which would be a positive 25 because when you square the negative. 10 minus 10 is 0. 0 squared is 0. 9 squared is 81. All right, I gotta check my points again. That's 10. Oh, I got my points backwards. That'll make a big difference. So x minus 10, y minus 15. So 10 minus 10, 6 minus 15 equals the 9 squared. That's still 0. 6 minus 15 is a negative 9 squared. 
So mine squared, the negative mine squared is still 81. So that one works. So that's how you do that. So, it would have been a little, I think I didn't give you guys enough information. It would have been a better if I'd have done the circles. So we'll just call this a, a trial and error and call it an error and take the assignment out of Canvas. But at least now you know what I was talking about. So do we not need to turn this in on Canvas anymore? No, you don't need to turn it in. I'm gonna take it out of Canvas. That way it, or maybe I'll just go in and give everybody points for it. That way I'm not, yeah, you know, I'm not hurting anybody. And we've we've covered it, so so there's yeah, no need to turn it in. Okay. All right, so what we're gonna look at now is the rest of the complex numbers. I might be at finished complex numbers. I don't remember. I'm going to look at them real quick. I think I, I, think I pretty much did. The only thing I didn't do was the eyes uh, to the powers. And I don't think I'm going to do that. The uh, eyes to the power where they still Because mm -hmm. if I give you like eyes to the eight. Okay. No. Right. We know that the single I equals the square root of negative one, right? I squared equals negative one. Okay. I cubed, I can rewrite it as the same thing as I times I squared because I'd still have three I's. So this is. I'm going to leave it as I, but my I squared is negative 1, which gives me negative I. So the I, I squared is 2 out of Okay, but it's I times I squared okay. by counting three I's. Then I to the fourth is the same thing I can say, the same thing as saying I squared times I squared. Because 2 and 2 is 4. Then I get negative 1 times negative 1 and I get a positive one. So I've got a pattern with I being equal to the square root of negative one, it's still equal to I. I squared is negative one. I cubed is negative I. I to the fourth is one. So if I look at I to the fifth, I'm gonna break it down to I. Let's go ahead and do five eyes. One, two, three, four, five. Okay. So this makes an I squared. This would make an I squared. So I have I, I squared, or yeah, I squared, I squared. So then I'm going to have I times negative one times negative one, which gives me just I again. Okay. So I'm going to equal one. Mm -hmm. So I to the sixth will equal, because we're following the pattern, negative one. I to the sixth, I can say is I squared times I squared times I squared, because I got two, four, six I's, which is negative one times negative one times negative one which equals negative one. So I to the seventh following the pattern of I negative one, it's going to be negative I. Then I to the eighth would be positive one. So it's a repeating pattern. Every four, it repeats again. So when I have I to the eighth, my answer is one. Okay. 
because yeah, every, it, it cycles and pours. So I think that was the only thing I didn't do. So this thing that y'all hate, they're called quadratic functions. Um, I'm not even going to watch those. Well, are we going to go over that homework? Did you set all the answer or did you want to and then you were going to do something the other good? I'm going to go back and let you have I haven't looked at it yet. Okay. Um, I moved furniture this weekend. Then I went out to the cow pasture. Cow pasture is not flat. Came out of there, my ankle was the size of a grapefruit. <laughs> I think I did too much too quick. Yeah. So, you know, I was, I'm so ready to be out of this and walking and, yeah. If it didn't happen, I have, yeah, I'm not superwoman. But I would definitely like to be. All right, so what this one is, this is solving quadratic equations. And this is section 2.5. And what we've been looking at was quadratic expressions. So the difference between what we have been doing and what we're going to do today is it's going to equal zero. Or it's going to equal something and then we set it to equal zero. Okay. So we can't we can simplify an expression, but we can't solve it. With an equation, we can solve it. We can determine what the value of x is. So if I look at this, first thing I want to do is I want to factor it. However, y'all want to factor it. I'm going to look, I've got a negative 21. One of my factors is negative 21. So I'm going to add to be a positive 4. Well, when I think it's 21, I think it's 7 and 3. 7 times 3 gives me a positive 21. If I did 7 plus negative 3, I get a positive 4, right? right. So now I'm going to have x plus 7 x minus 3, and it's still equal to 0. So this is stuff that we've done before, other than having it set equal to 0. The new stuff is probably the easiest stuff, okay? Because we're just going to take each factor, the x plus 7, set it equal to 0, the x minus 3, set it equal to 0, to see what are my values of x. So I'm going to subtract 7, so x can equal negative 7, then I'm going to add 3, and x can equal 3. So I have two values for x. I have negative 7 and 3. All I'm really looking for is the negative 7 and 3. You can leave it on your paper or whatever as negative as x equals negative seven, x equals three. If I do anything on paper, just follow the directions on Canvas. That's the easy part of this, right? The setting it equal to zero and solving. So let's see if we can get practice in factoring. So x squared minus nine x plus eighteen equals zero. So I've got to have my factors of 18 that are going to add to be a negative 9. Okay, it's going to be a positive 18 and a negative 9. So that tells me that both my factors have to be negative, right? So if I look at 6 times 3, that gives me 18. Negative 6 times negative 3 will still give me a positive 18. But negative 6 plus negative 3 gives me a negative 9. 
So I'm going to have x minus 6, x minus 3 equals 0. And then x minus 6 equals 0, x minus 3 equals 0. I'm going to add 6. Actually, I'm not going to add 6. I'm going to do this a different way. I'm going to take this 6 and I'm going to move it across the equal sign. And this is where the magic happens. When you move it across that equal sign, it's no longer a minus 6, but a positive 6. Same thing with a negative 3. When I move him across, he's no longer a minus 3, he's a positive 3. Now, if you also have to add 6 to both sides and add 3 to both sides, that's fine. So that was, I don't want to say simple, but it wasn't any harder than what you've been doing. Let's look at one that looks differently. So 5x squared equals 5x plus 30. Okay. First thing I want to do is I want to get all my x's on the same side. Okay. I can leave my constant where it's at, but I need my x's. No, I, I'm doing the wrong question, doing the wrong formula. I need everything on, I need it equal to zero. But since I've got a positive 5x, I'm going to, or 5x squared, I'm going to subtract 5x and subtract 30. I'm basically moving them both across the equal sign. So I have 5x squared. When it's positive, it goes across, it becomes a minus. And then it's going to equal 0. Now, what do you notice about the 5x squared, the 5x, and the 30? They all have something in common. They all go by 5. They're all divisible by 5. Okay. With an equal sign, I don't have to factor out a 5, but I can divide everything by 5, including the 0. So all the way across the equal sign. And I don't have to worry about this limit 5 anymore. So I have x squared minus x minus 6. And 0 divided by 5 is still 0. Now it's something that we can factor. So I know it's going to be x and x. I've got a negative 6. I want my factors in negative 6 that are going to add to be a negative 1. And I'm thinking 3 and 2 because 3 times 2 gives me 6. If I did a negative 3 and a positive 2, I get negative 1, right? So x minus 3 x plus 2 will equal to 0. Then we're going to take the x minus 3, set it equal to 0. The x plus 2, set it equal to 0. I'm going to add 3 over. I move the 3 over, move the 2 over. So x equals 3 and x equals negative 2. Okay. We all still good? Maybe. All right. Now, this one looks a little bit different. This is what's called the square root property. Move it down, please. Okay, just a second. Better? Right. If I have an x squared equals a number, or a y squared, or an r squared, or whatever, but it equals a number, and I can take the square root of this number, I'm basically going to take the square root of both sides. 
So the square root of x squared is just x because the square and the square root cancel. Now, what's the square root of 36? What times itself multiplies through 36? Make y'all think hard. Six. Six times six is 36. Okay. But the thing about it is, is when we're taking the square root of a number, it's plus or minus. Because did I square a positive 6 to get 36? Or did I square a negative 6 to get 36? Because both of these would give me a positive 36 for the square. <laughs> Sounds like we have an extra guess. That's okay, though. So then, x equals positive 6 and negative 6. And that's my answer. So what if I had x squared equals 49? What would my answer be? Positive 7. Right, positive negative 7. Positive 7, negative 7, because I'm taking the square root of both sides, and it's going to be a plus or minus 7. I don't mind people hearing me. I just don't want to hear them down the hallway. All right, so, you know me, I can't leave things alone. I have to add a complication. But this one's not a bad complication. Okay, so I have x minus 1 squared equals 25. The whole binomial is squared. Okay, so I'm going to take the square root of the whole thing. And I'm going to take the square root of 25. So my square cancels my square root. And I have just x minus 1. Then it equals plus or minus square root of 25, which is 5. But that doesn't tell me what x equals. Okay? So I've got to add this one over, move this one over. And I always move it to the front. I think it's just the way I was taught. So I have 1 plus or minus 5. So I know I'm going to have two values because I'm going to have a plus and I'm going to have a minus. So I'm going to do 1 plus 5 and get 6. And then I've got to do the 1 minus 5 and get negative 4. So I've got to split this plus or minus out. So then my answer is 6 and negative 4. These are easier than factoring, right? Okay. This one's got a little bit of a complication. Me and my complications. Should I have had complications or curveballs? Neither. Neither. <laughs> All right. So I've got 2x plus 1 squared equals 9. And again, I want to use the square root property, the same property. And I want to take the square root of the binomial and the square root of 9. So I'm left with 2x plus 1 equals plus or minus 3, right? Then I have to move the 1 over. So I'm moving it across, so it becomes a negative 1, plus or minus 3. And then that still doesn't tell me what x is. So now I've got to divide both sides by 2, and I'm going to divide the whole thing by 2. So x equals negative 1 plus 3 divided by 2, and negative 1 minus 3 divided by 2. Because when you have the plus or minus, you've got to separate them out. So, negative 1 plus 3 is 2, right? And 2 divided by 2 gives me 1. Negative 1 minus 3 gives me 4. 4 divided by 2 gives me 2. Okay. So, it's just an added step. 
Yes, that should be negative. That it should be, yes. Thank you. Those pesky negative signs cost me an A in college algebra. I never got a test back in college algebra that I didn't have minus one point, minus one point, and almost half the problems because I dropped the stupid negative sign. It is so easy to do. Okay, so are we good with this? So far, so good. Okay. So let's look at completing the square. And this is just another way that we can find out what the values of x are. Okay. This is a longer process, and there's other ways of doing this, but you've got to know how to do it to do some other things. So when I do completing the square, what I want to look at or completing the square, when I'm going to factor this, before I even complete the square or anything else, I want to look. Do I have factors of 22, negative 22, that is going to add to be negative 9? So I have 20, negative 22. My factors would be 1 and 22, 2 and 11, 2 and 11. If I do negative 11 and 2, that would give me negative 9, wouldn't it? Mm -hmm. So why am I using completing the square on this one? Because it says 2. But I could actually factor it. x plus 2, x minus 11. And so I'm going to have... So both equal to 0, x equals negative 2, and x equals 11. So now we know what the answers are. So let's go back and let's change colors and let's do completing the square. Okay? Because you're going to use, and it works kind of, you can use completing the square to do any of these, but if you can't find the factors of this last term that are going to add to be your middle term, that's where you want to use completing the square. So I've got the x squared minus the 9x minus the 22 equals 0. So first thing I want to do is I want to add 22 over. I want to move the 22 to the other side. I want just my x squared values on one side. And then I want to make this a perfect square. So I'm going to put a number in here. And it's going to be a plus. It's always going to be a positive. And I've also got to add it to the other side. And the formula I'm going to use is negative or it's, it's one half of b squared. It's not a negative. It's just one half of b squared. In this case, the b is my negative 9. So I've got one half of negative 9. That gives me negative 9 over 2. And when I square the fraction, you want to leave it as a fraction, you want to get 81 over 4. So I'm going to have 81 over 4 here. I'm going to have 81 over 4 here. Now here's the, the easy thing. This negative 9 over 2 that I factored, or that I squared, is my factor. It's x minus 9 halves squared. Okay. So it's always what I squared is my factor. And then it's going to equal the 22 plus 81 over 4. I don't know what my good calculator is. So it gives me 88 
cover four. That gives me 169 over four. So I want to wrap this where I can read it. So now I'm going to use my square root property. Okay. Because I've got a binomial square. And then I've got my, or my answer. So I'm going to take the square root of both sides. Square cancels the square root. I'm left with x minus 9 halves equals, and then plus or minus. What's the square root of 169? Do y'all know? It's 13, and then the square root of 4 is 2. I'm going to move my 9 halves back over. So I'm going to add it over so I have 9 halves plus or minus 13 over 2. It was a long process. So now I have 9 plus 13 over 2 and 9 minus 13 over 2. Same denominator, I can write them over 1. So 9 plus 13 is 22 over 2, which is 11. 9 minus 13 is negative 4 over 2, which is negative 2. And that's the same answer that I got when I did it by factoring. Now, remind me again, how many of y'all are going to go past college algebra? Not me. Okay. I don't really know Hey, you may fall in love with it before the semester is over, and it may just click at some point. I'm pregnant, though. It's all my mom. <laughs> <laughs> now, I told y'all I have a, a YouTube channel now. Oh, uh, really? Yeah. Hmm. I, and I didn't want to be on YouTube, but it's the only way I get my videos at. So, y'all go like my YouTube channel. You don't have to watch my videos, but go like my YouTube channel, please. Subscribe to it. That's where I post these videos. But, and some of them are public, and some of them are private. Or some unlisted, so the ones I show on, yeah, the recorded class lectures, most of them are private. But there's other videos I have done, and then I'm going to do some more on. So, y'all, there we all right, so that's the only thing I'm doing with completing the square. Because at this point, it's really not all that necessary. Um, so the next thing is the quadratic. The quadratic formula. And if you want to watch some hilarious videos, Go to YouTube and search quadratic formula songs. And because there's one teacher that's on there and, and she's done this. And for X if it's for extra points or for points, I think it's for extra credit. She will have her students make up a song to uh, explain the quadratic or to, to sing the song. Uh, they'll make up the tunes, what they do. They already have the words to the quadratic formula. And they have to get up in front of the class and sing the quadratic formula song. And I've seen it wrapped. I've seen it sung to uh, Mary Had a Little Lamb. I've seen it sung to London Bridges. Uh, and it's hilarious. This is all these high school kids. And you can tell the ones that are football players and they get up there and do it because they have no shame. They are hilarious. So you need a good laugh. And you want to laugh at math? That's the best way to do it. Okay. All right, so the quadratic formula, it's always x equals. Yes, ma'am. What's your need? Over there? No. 
I just realized you don't have to keep my note. What time did class run out? Three o'clock, right at three, ten to three. Let me come up with plan B. Okay. All right, so negative B plus or minus the square root of B squared minus 4AC all over 2A. And of course, our quadratic equation is the AX squared plus BX plus C equals zero. So what this one is mostly is a plug and chug. All right, you're going to be given the equation, you're going to plug the numbers in, and you're going to solve it. So if I give you, let me go back to my other pencil, the equation, where did my equation go? 2x squared minus 6x plus 7. My pen's dying. Equals 0. The 2 is A, this negative 6 is B, and the 7 is C. Okay, we don't need the x squared, we don't need the x, okay? So I'm going to plug these into my quadratic formula. So I have a negative, negative 6, because it's a negative b, plus or minus the square root of b squared, so it's negative 6 squared, minus 4, times a, which is 2, times c, which is 7 all over 2 times a, which is 2. And this equals x. So now we're just going to do the math, okay? So negative times negative gives me a positive 6 plus or minus. You have to remember when you square it in negative, it becomes a positive. So negative 6 squared is positive 36 minus 4 times 2 is 8. It's time to come in. Okay. So 4 times 2 is 8. 8 times 7 56. Thank you. And 2 times 2 is 4. So now I'm going to take, this is still x equals, 6 plus or minus. Now when I do 36 minus 56, I'm going to get a negative 20, right? Mm -hmm. All over 4. Well, it's a good thing we did complex numbers last week, because now we know what to do with this negative under the square root, right? Because I can't put square root of negative 20 in my calculator and come up with a number. So at this point, we're just going to simplify. So I'm going to have 6 plus or minus, and if I do the i and the square root of 20, I have to simplify my, my 20. So I get square root of 4 times square root of 5. Square root of 4, square root of 2, times square root of 2. So I have a pair of 2s, it's going to hold 2. And then I have my square root of 5. So I have 2, and I can't forget my i. So 2i, square root of 5, over 4. Now, I'm not quite simplified here. Because 6, 2, and 4, we look at only the whole numbers. 6, 2, and 4 are all even numbers, right? So I'm going to divide each one of them by 2. So 2 divided by 2 gives me 1. 6 divided by 2 gives me 3. 4 divided by 2 gives me 2. So then my final answer is 3 plus or minus. I can say 1i or I can say i square root of 5 over 2. And then that's my final answer. It's a whole lot easier than the, uh, completing the square, isn't it? Mm, no. <laughs> no? I don't know. This one, I mean, 
like I did it all by hand because I don't have a good calculator. But you can put six negative six if you put it in your calculator. Well, be sure to put parentheses around it. You can put negative six squared in your calculator, and then do four times two times eight in your calculator. Subtract it in your calculator. You know, most of this can be done in the calculator. So, all right, let's try another one of these. Oh, and this would be a not real solution because it has the I in it. It would be a complex solution. So I'm going to change colors here. This time I have x squared plus 4x plus 2 equals 0. Okay. If there's not a number in front of my x squared, I've got to have something here. What would a be? What number would a be? 1, because there's always that understood 1. B is 4, C is 2. One thing I always had my high school kids do, because they would, this always confused them, I'd have them write A equals 1, B equals 4, C equals 2, before they would plug their, thing, their numbers into the quadratic formula. All right, so the quadratic formula is negative B, so I get negative 4, plus or minus the square root, of b squared, so it's 4 squared, minus 4, times a, which is 1, times c, which is 2, all over 2 times a, which is 1. Okay. So now I've got negative 4 plus or minus, and well, I'm gonna, I have my calculator do it. 4 times 4, right, well, minus 4 times 1 times 2. So it actually did it. So negative 4 plus or minus 16 minus 8 was 8 over 2. So this is this is a positive eight, so I don't have an eye with it this time. So I have to do the square root of eight. I have to simplify. So I have to do the square root of two times the square root of four. The square root of four breaks down. So again, I've got a pair of twos, pair of square roots, to make a positive two. So it's 2 square root of 2 for 8. So negative 4 plus or minus 2 square root of 2 over 2. Now, put my little line in there. What do you notice about three whole numbers? They're all three divisible by 2. So 2 goes into 2 one time, 2 goes into 2 one time, 2 goes into 4 two times. So I have negative 2 plus or minus the square root of 2 over 1. Since it's over 1, I can write it just as negative 2 plus or minus the square root of 2. Now, I have either lost y'all completely or bored you to death. So, we're going to stop here. I'm quitting way early. That's no shame in quitting. <laughs> oh, yeah, there's shame in quitting. But there's no shame in stopping early. Right? Okay. Um... This is pretty close to the end of chapter two. And I don't know where I'm going from here. Um, 
Do y'all want to test over chapter two? I'll put a review up if you want to test over just chapter two. If you want to wait and test over the next two chapters. Don't look at me like that. We've got to test at some point. Okay, Mark Tree people. I don't really do it once. That's all I know. Yeah, I don't really want to do two at once either. I'd rather test over chapter two. Anything else? Um, I don't know. <laughs> <laughs> Let's plan on uh, letting me get the homework up. And we may go ahead and do something different on, on Wednesday and then maybe test on Monday. How does that sound to everybody? Y'all don't really have one there. Sounds <laughs> I love hearing the little's voice. Uh, okay, so we'll plan on a week from today. That may get pushed back to a week from Wednesday, but that's what we'll plan on for now. Okay? All right. Uh, hopefully, I'll have this homework or something up. It probably won't be a whole lot of problems because these are hard to write in. But I'll have uh, some kind of problems up, some kind of homework, some kind of review for chapter two up. This week, I would say today, but I don't think it'll be today. All right. So y'all have a good week, a good weekend. No, week. I will see you on Wednesday. <laughs>